Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? It's dark outside. Yeah, I'm liking the cold weather. Oh, man. No. It finally got it finally got kind of chilly today. It's cold. It's dark. I ain't happy. Oh, no. This is like <laughs> the best time of year. Cold and dark. Cold and dark is exactly what I want. No, no not me. Mm. Yeah, too dark, too cold, not happy. Uh, well... It doesn't last long. That's it's a good thing. <laughs> no, I, I disagree. So uh, my brother will be in town um, this week, and uh, he just missed the like really beautiful weather where it was like seventy three degrees in the day, <laughs> yeah, and sunny. And well, I think it's still going to be sunny, although there's some cloudy days coming up. But it's still going to be sunny. But now it's like fifty five in the day. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. but for him, that's nice, though. Yeah, like, I mean, that's still outside. better. It's still better in Ohio, right? But yeah. um, that's going outside weather. Yeah, work in the yard. Yeah, it's beach weather. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it better be anyway. Uh, I spent the uh, weekend at the beach this past weekend. It was nice. Yeah. Well, I, the winter time is the time to go to the beach. There's not a whole lot of folks out there. The weather was nice. It was chilly, mm-hmm. but it wasn't cold. Yeah, I mean, you don't really want to get in the water there anyway. Yeah, I'm not getting. Well, this was destined. The water was beautiful. Yeah, but it's still all salty and. Oh, like yeah, you feel all not. sticky and stuff when you get well, out. I wouldn't know because I didn't get in it. Ah, well. <laughs> but it was beautiful. Point made. <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a time to go to the beach. Hmm. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> yeah. I think that's essentially the plan. Yep. Um, we've got things yeah. to talk about. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where I, do you, I now, you want to start? I now despise Matt Gates. Yeah. <laughs> I wasted a bunch of time reading up on this guy. Yeah. And then he quits. It, it drops out. Yeah. Or removed his name from the... From uh, consideration. Consideration, yes. yeah. yeah. I, I am curious what happens now because he resigned his seat. Oh, did he actually resign the seat too? Well, I don't know, I don't know if he did it formally or not, but I thought he had. Uh, maybe. But he, he was also reelected. Yeah. So does that yeah, mean that no he can, reason he does shouldn't. that mean he can go back into office in January? <laughs> I mean, he I'm should. Curious. Like I say, I mean, I don't. My understand, I, like I did not read the headline, or all I read was the headline mm-hmm. um, that came across my phone was that he had removed his name for consideration for the attorney general thing. Yeah. But I don't. I didn't read anything that said that he was stepping away from his seat, and he shouldn't if he just won re-election. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think he resigned his current seat. Oh yeah. To to be attorney general. Oh. Okay. Um there's no way he's gonna he hadn't already but, resigned his current seat though, had he? Maybe. I don't know. Be interesting to find out. I, it, he had, but I don't know if he'd done it formally. Formally, yeah. 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 And I don't even know what that entails in the, the house yeah. house. Right? Yeah, house. Yeah. Um I I'm not sure either. It's definitely I, I don't know. I think it's I mean, I'm not a big fan of the guy, but I think it's a shame that he he decided that he didn't removed himself from consideration. I'm I'm realizing that I can't read my notes. Oh yeah, <laughs> can you not read your own handwriting? Yeah, I have that I, problem. <laughs> I ended up like squeezing a bunch of stuff into the edges, and yeah. in order to like speak into the microphone, I can't read that far away. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> or at least not. In my eight point type that I wrote it in yeah. to fit it into the corners and stuff. Time to get you some new glasses. Yeah, well, that's not my Art. eyesight problem. Actually, it might be now. I'm I'm starting to notice more and more. Yeah. That it's not just far away. That's hard to see. Yeah. Up close, it's getting hard to see too, and that's really terrible. Because yeah. I really like reading. <laughs> yeah, you really like seeing up close. <laughs> yeah, and not having, and I hate having something on my face. Yeah. Um, like I didn't wear goggles or sunglasses when I swam and lifeguarded. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, the only time I wear my glasses is, uh, when I drive. Yeah. I'm Cause a- you, you gotta be able to read signs and stuff. <laughs> and you know, in the daytime I can get away with not wearing my glasses, not at night. Yeah. <laughs> at night I absolutely have to wear my glasses. And then I always regret that I didn't bring my glasses in on the rare occasion that I go to a movie. Oh Yeah. Because yeah. then it's all blurry, and I'm like, "Damn, 
<laughs> Should have brought my glasses. <laughs> this in. movie would be a lot better if I could see what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> and then I start to think, depending on the movie, if maybe that's the director's style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because uh, I will rent movies frequently, action movies. And well, I guess I don't really rent them anymore. You stream stuff now. But, you know, yeah. uh, watch an action movie and the action is so frenetic that it's like it looks pretty much the same as if I didn't have glasses on. You know, yeah. like it's all blurry and stuff just because too many things are happening at once. You can't really see what's happening. Yeah. yeah. And they keep changing camera angles and moving things around. I don't know. That's the new style. It must keep the the uh, millennials engaged. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. You, you can't have the same shot for more than like three seconds or they're like moving to their phone. <laughs> it's, time to, it's time to check Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's my theory anyway. That's the working theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. There is some stuff that we that we meant to talk about last week and we didn't. Oh, and by the way, I didn't pull the clips that you told me that you wanted me to pull. Oh man, I, I listened to them. It was just too long. Okay, it was like three minutes of of clippage. Yeah, like it, it, everything was a separate clip, and they were all like a minute a piece, and it's just too much. Okay, I thought you were just gonna pull the one, but there was no the one really. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Sorry. So we'll we'll just have to talk about. We'll just have to. All right. Had to go from memory. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what was said? Uh oh. <laughs> we'll say it instead of them saying it. Yeah. Um. All right. But last week, and I think that this is relevant considering what's going on now. Maybe I should move it down. Maybe we just start with the cabinet positions. Okay. Let's start with Matt Gates. All right. Well, who has <laughs> removed himself from consideration? Yeah. Um, I do find it interesting that every, you know, at least all the left wing media seems to be saying, well, he removed himself cons- from consideration, obviously, because he didn't want his guilt to come out in public. Yeah. <laughs> Which may be, may be I mean, correct. Yeah. I mean, it may be true. Uh, I suspect that that ethics report will come out whether he dropped out or not. So I don't yeah. think that that saves him from that. Yeah. But especially if he keeps a seat. Yeah. yeah. Um. I. You know. I don't know what kind of a scumbag he is or not. Yeah. I just assume that they all are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well. Yeah. And that's a that's a solid assert, uh, assumption <laughs> yeah. because, you know, they are. <laughs> yeah. Um. That said, I think it's more likely that. It was just more trouble than it was worth. I, I, I suspect that he had, because he's made enemies on both sides. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Democrats will vote against him because he's not a Democrat. And there are a bunch of Republicans that will vote against him because he staged a coup. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. for various other reasons, because he's an anti-establishment yeah. guy. Yeah. Which is which like, is what was appealing about him. Which is actually. the only thing I liked about him. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like those people. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that more likely what happened is that he was talking to people in the Senate and they were like, yeah, there's just no way we're going to get no enough path. votes. Yeah. Um, so do you really want to have your reputation dragged through the mud? Yeah. For a, for, for a, a lost position cause. You're not going to get. You yeah. Know? Um, although I could be wrong. It could be that he's actually like a guilty bastard and yeah. thinks that this is going to save him. And there was, yeah, there was blackmail involved. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but I, I suspect the, the most likely thing is that he just didn't have a way of getting a confirmed. Yeah. I still like the idea of him being the one that they didn't get, though. You know? Yeah. Like that. He was the one that I was like, yeah, he's just kind of there as a foil so that the left can say they got to win, you know? Yeah. And I feel like to this draw takes, fire. Yeah. Well, it, I think you should have nominated him for something else then. Yeah. Because the AG is somebody that you want yeah. placed quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with Merrick Garland in there right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who has led the federal <laughs> government against the incoming president for the last four years. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. That's probably not the guy you want running things while you're fighting over a, a slot. Yeah. But, that's true. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he could he could have been a guy to just kind of draw fire and... I mean, we'll get to that later, but um, I'm kind of curious where you stand on who's who the real targets are. But yeah. let's start with the foreign policy stuff. Okay. So there's uh, Mike Waltz, Michael Waltz. Yeah. Um, I don't know a lot about this guy. He there's I mean I don't honestly either. I've I've got Cliff's notes. 
Okay. Um, yeah. He's been uh, recommended for the National Security Advisor job. Um, he's terrible, as far as I can tell, Yeah. Um, in terms of the things that we want. Yeah. He is a big supporter of Israel. He is a Russia-China-Iran hawk. Okay. Um, he, uh, he wants a cartel war in Mexico. Oh, he's one of those. <laughs> yes. He's, he's one of those that thinks that the U S government should use the U S military in Mexico to fight the cartels. Oh, wow. Which is a complete, you know, it's a problem for Mexican sovereignty. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just ridiculous anyway. It's just a let's, bad idea. let's fight a real hot drug war. Yeah. Right. How does that sound? Because the one we've been doing has worked so well for the last yeah, yeah. 40 years, 50 years. How long has this been going on? I think about 40 years. Cause I want to say it started, I mean, it started under Reagan, right? The war on drugs. Yeah. I think really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just say no times. Just, just say no. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So he just like, man, he's ready to, to fight, fight, fight everywhere. Now he wants the Ukraine war to come to a close. Hey, that's something. No, it's oh, not. Really? Because the way he wants it to come to a close is that we put so much pressure militarily and economically on Putin that he gives up. Oh, yeah. Okay. He wants to coerce an end to the war. He uh, doesn't want to negotiate. Well, I mean, the only way you do that is boots on the ground. Like, I mean, if, if that's if that's what you're advocating for, at least come out and say it. Yeah, I mean, he, that's... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what he's advocating I, I for. I think that, yeah. I don't, I can't recall if I, if he's actually said that. Yeah, I mean, that's the only but way But I think you, he has, actually. I, I think mean, that's the only like, way you get that outcome. You know, we should put soldiers in Ukraine or something. I don't know. Yeah. But he's definitely advocated some other th crazy things, like uh, allowing the Ukrainians to fire long-range missiles into Russia. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about that tonight, too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, a little teaser. So that's Michael Waltz. He's okay. He's he's terrible. So he's he's no good. No, he's he's ready for war. Yeah, he's a military industrial complex guy. But he's, he's this is an advisory position, right? I mean, yeah, the National Security Advisor, but he's the head of the National Security Council, right? Okay. I mean, I, um, I get confused sometimes. I just didn't know. I mean, there's an argument to be made that he's just kind of there to. I don't think he gets to make policy. No, but... But most of these people don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, Marco Rubio, Secretary of State. Yeah. That's, uh, he's going to breeze through, of course. They'll oh yeah, definitely they'll confirm no him. Nobody's going to have a problem with Marco Rubio for some reason. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> it's because um, he's so terrible. <laughs> the terrible ones will breeze through. Yeah. So, <laughs> I um, he's... Also, you know, pro uh, Israel, kill all the Palestinians, yeah. um, give them everything they need. Uh, the thing that really sets him up, he's a China hawk, he's an Iran hawk. Um, he has been softer on Ukraine, the Ukraine stuff. And in fact, I think he voted against some funding. Oh, nice. That's good. So, you know, there's a there's a point to add on the, on the pros yeah. side. Yeah. It's, and he's not saying we should end it by like putting our troops in there or firing long range missiles in the Ukraine or anything <laughs> stupid like that. Yeah. Um, that said, the thing that, <laughs> that sets him apart from, I mean, not entirely, but where he is worse than everybody else is that he's a big hawk about South America, South oh, and Central <laughs> America. Like yeah. he's, you know, he's ready to go fight a war in Venezuela. Yeah. And and take Maduro out of power. Like he really thinks that that's an important thing for the U.S. government to do is to remove Nicolas Maduro from power. Now, that sounds really terrible. Um, and in fact, he uh, after the July um, elections in Venezuela, where Maduro won another term, um, he said that <laughs> he. He publicly said that Venezuelan military should just overthrow Maduro and save the country. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, now, with all that said, uh, Blinken just announced for the second time um, that Edmundo uh, Gonzalez, 
uh, is the rightful winner of the elections in July, not Nicolas Maduro. Of course, Gonzalez is living in Spain right now. <laughs> in he's exile. Not even, he's not even living in Venezuela. Yeah. But uh, that's who the State Department thinks um, should be running the should country. Should be running the country. And of course, we've already been through this six years ago with Guaido. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was just as ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we have, uh, do you have anything you want to say about Marco Rubio? No, I'm sorry. No, I'm good. I'm just like going through the no, list here. So interrupt as you see fit. Absolutely. Um, Elise Stefanik, UN ambassador. Um, not somebody I'm familiar with. Yeah. She's a hardcore Zionist. Um, and again, not that it really seems to matter that much. It's just a continuation of policy because the current UN ambassador for Biden's administration just vetoed a ceasefire resolution in the UN yeah. uh, for Gaza. So, yeah. um, once again, I don't, so, this is my point on those people, I suppose. So Michael Waltz wants crazy things like allowing, um, Ukraine to fire American long range missiles into Russia. Yeah. Which the current administration has just permitted. <laughs> has already said is okay. At yeah. least unofficially. I mean, the New yeah. York times reported it, as far as I know, our government hasn't actually said it out loud, yeah. but they have. Ukraine has fired Attackums missiles into Russia. Yeah. So I think it's just like a plausible deniability thing. We don't say it in public. That way we can pretend that we didn't <laughs> allow it, but obviously we did. Yeah. Or they would, because they've been asking to do it all this time. Yeah. And we've been publicly saying no, and they have it. And now there's a report that we privately said yes, and they've started doing it. And then it. they started doing it. Yeah. Know. So um, Michael Waltz doesn't seem like it'll be a significant change from the policy that the Biden administration is following right now. Marco Rubio wants to um, sponsor a coup in Venezuela. Blinken just announced that that once again we're supporting the guy who lost the election in Venezuela as the the real winner. Yeah. So continue that policy. Uh, Elise Stefanik, uh, Zionist UN ambassador, um, will go into the UN and do the same thing that the current UN ambassador did, which is to veto any kind of uh, any kind of action against Israel and any ceasefire in Gaza. Yeah. So none of that changes. Yeah. Status quo. Um, and it does, you know, uh, Mary Nadelson is, is a huge booster to the Republican Party. Yeah. You got to think that even if, like, Trump doesn't really care, that the Republican Party has got to be pushing and saying, hey, we need this money to win all these other elections. You got to give her things that she wants. Yeah. And so that's where I suspect this most of this came from. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that Marco Rubio is... Um, is as bad as Pompeo. Yeah. He's also not as smart as Pompeo. <laughs> um, and, and there is some reason to think that like, maybe because Trump is so popular, uh, among the Republican base that these people are having to shift to be more like Trump's stated policies. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not giving up on this yet, although I don't see that it'll be a significant it's, improvement. Yeah, we're not seeing what we'd like to see. No. Um, Christy Nome, yeah. uh, she's going to be um, head of the Department of Homeland Security. Okay. She's another Zionist and Iran hawk. Uh, um, yeah. It's very interesting that she's such a supporter of Israel because I think that there's like one rabbi in the entire state of South Dakota. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it doesn't seem like uh, that's, you know, really representing her constituency. Yeah. But it might be representing her um, funders. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Funny how it always comes back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of wish she'd stayed as the governor of South Dakota. That seems like a better place. Yeah. I mean, they were good. she was good during COVID. Yeah. So. The only one that never had any restrictions or mandates. The whole time. Yep. yep. Um, John Ratcliffe, CIA, Iran Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> You're seeing a pattern here, right? A little bit. Um, he, now, he referred to the entire state of Iran and its associates as terrorists. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, not, not there are terrorists in Iran, yeah. or we have to worry about terrorists from Iran. Or yeah. Iran supporting terrorists. They just are. <laughs> Iran is terrorists. terrorists. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so this guy's, he's, you know, 
He likes to see the the nuances and the gray areas, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't know I don't know much more about him. Yeah, uh, honestly, he's not he's but, not somebody that's been on my radar. So. Yeah. Um and then we got Pete Hegseth. People were kind of up in arms about this one. Yeah. I don't entirely understand why. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's no worse than any of the rest of them. I don't see, I don't <laughs> see the problem. But yeah. Secretary of Defense is where they're... What Trump said he was offering, I guess. Yeah. Um, this guy's a... He's a Marine. Okay. Retired Marine, yeah. I think. I think he was a major. Um, he's... Uh, <laughs> he's also an Iran hawk, um, has been on record multiple times saying that we should just launch missiles into Iran, that we should destroy their uh, civilian nuclear program, that, you know, et cetera. Um, yeah. Now, that was years ago. There's a more recent interview where he seems to have, like... Softens on that. Yeah, um, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not enough for me to feel comfortable. Um, he was talking about the, in that same interview, um, he was talking about the Russia, Ukraine thing. He didn't seem on board with supporting Ukraine, but his description of what was going on there was the most idiotic and simplistic thing I've ever heard. Well, I just think that, you know, uh, Putin saw a chance to take back what was his. And so that's what he's doing. Like th- what? <laughs> so, just <laughs> zero understanding of any of the the events that led up to this at all. So he's kind of on Kamala's level, then. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Um, but he, I don't know. I think that he, so he's really against the his big talking point has been the wokeism in the military that he's absolutely opposed to that. Yeah. So he may make our military a more effective fighting force, but I think he also wants it to fight more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So trade off, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to fight a bunch, at least be better at it. Yeah. I mean, I do want our, our military to be strong. I don't want us to have to use it though. <laughs> yeah. Well, he does. He He's yeah. definitely on board with using it. When he came back, he was in a, um, uh, veterans group, uh, promoting staying in Iraq. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, um, then things get better. Yeah, then we, we get into the, the good stuff. Sort of. I yeah. mean, so Tulsi is a significant improvement over the rest of those people. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Not perfect. Director of National Intelligence. Um, she's ready to, f- I mean, she believes in the terror war. She's ready to fight bin Ladenites wherever. Yeah. Um, but at the very least, she understands who's wearing what color over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so she's opposed to, uh, supporting Al Qaeda against Iran. Yeah. So right. there's that Yeah. at least, but she is, you know, she's ready to fight the, continue fighting the Sunnis like we did right after nine 11, the Al Qaeda groups, um, Al Nusra and all that. Yeah. Uh, she is not on board with supporting Al Qaeda groups um, against Shiite groups. Sunni. Uh, she's not on board with supporting Sunni militias against Shiite militias. Sunnis were Al Qaeda. Yeah. Um, so she's not on board with funding Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula to fight the Houthis and you know things like that. Um, she is generally more focused on negotiating and coming to a settlement. Yeah. Than she is with war. Um, of course, she's being, uh, you know, really <laughs> beaten down in the media because of that right now yeah. um, for going and meeting with Bashar al-Assad. Uh, that's like uh, treasonous as far as anybody's <laughs> concerned. But the, I mean, the truth is that she went and met with him to try and negotiate some kind of peace settlement yeah. instead of continuing to fight there. Right. Where we were fighting both sides of a civil war. Yeah. Um, including the other side, which was Al Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> well, Al Nusra, but the yeah. the more radical wing of Al Qaeda yeah. um was the the side that we were supporting against Bashar al Assad, but we were also fighting them in Iraq and you know. <laughs> yeah. Can't what make a mess. it up. Yeah. yeah. So um now the the thing that I do really like about her in this position is that she's she's like she's kind of no nonsense. Yeah. 
she's definitely got some things wrong. She's like, you know, she's a big supporter of Israel in this fight also. Um, you know, she, she does have an anti-Islamist thing and that's her position on Israel is that these are just a bunch of Islamic radicals. And so we need to fight them and like not recognizing them as, uh, an occupied oppressed group. Yeah. So yeah, things could be better, but at the same time, like I said, no nonsense. Somebody who, uh, I think has good principles in terms of her general morality and, um, integrity. Yeah. And so having her as the head of the intelligence agencies as a whole, um, I mean, I guess at the very least, like she's the one that's going to be interpreting for Donald Trump. What of that to believe what is true and what isn't. Yeah. So I think that there's reason to feel good about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm the only one talking here, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to give you a chance to oh, no, you're good. have things to say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of Tulsi. I mean, I don't have a whole lot more really to add to any of that. No. Yeah. I mean, I like Tulsi. I, I contributed to her campaign. Um, I think that, that generally, I think that she's, I think it's the integrity thing. I think that she's one of the few people up there with integrity. Yeah. Um, I agree. and that's gotten her in trouble. Of course, you know, the other thing that they're saying is that she's a, a Putin puppet, which is absolutely ridiculous. This is again, I mean, I think she was a major also. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, that's just wild. I mean, she's like served this country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if she's still active in the reserves or not, but she, she was, was when she was can in her last campaign. Yeah. Um, at the time that Hillary Clinton, when Hillary Clinton yes, when Hillary called Clinton. her uh, a traitor and said that she was a Putin, um, that she was allied with Putin or whatever. What, I forget exactly what she said, but yeah. suggested that she was a, an asset of Russia. Yeah. Um, uh, she had a security clearance. Yeah, exactly. Like if anybody really believed that, yeah, she wouldn't have had a security. Anyway, so yeah. insanity. Yeah, um, that talking point, and I've heard it from a few uh, Democrats. Like, um, oh, uh, what's her name that was going to stop us from getting um, solicitous phone calls? But no, oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren. Warren, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Elizabeth Warren said it. Yeah. Um, the uh, former DNC chair uh, that leaked um, Hillary the debate questions, um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she uh, said it. Like, these are all people that, that recently, like within the last two weeks, yeah. got on public television and said that Tulsi was working with Vladimir Putin was a traitor to this country. Yeah. From our own party, no less. Yeah. Well, former, former still though. Yeah. Um, but I, I think she's, I think she's better than most. So yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. Um, I, you know, again, there's, there's things wrong with her, but she, of these appointments so far has been the best. And, like there's a lot of people that are um, anti Iran and she's not. Um, I think that at least it'll provide some level of balance. I don't know that there's enough of her, uh, although I think that she's tenacious. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if there's enough of her to overwhelm the Iran hawks. Yeah. <coughs> well, considering how many we listed off this. Yeah. A little so far that that are hawks um <laughs> so and you know and all of those people pretty much are china hawks too yeah most of them are russia hawks yeah um the they're just on board with the idea that we can't allow a near peer competitor anywhere in the world that we have to maintain hegemony across the entire globe that we can't allow even regional powers yeah no. uh, well and that just it it won't work we're even even if we are capable of doing that, it doesn't, I mean, we're going to, we've already bankrupted ourselves trying to. Yeah. We just haven't realized it yet. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. We're bankrupt. There ain't no question about that. And then there's Matt Gates. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you know who this person is, but it just came through. Um, oh, I got to find it. Pam B 
Bo Bondi? B O N D I? Nope, don't know. That's who um, Trump is recommending over after since Gates has removed himself now. Okay. He just came. I can't it. believe he would do that. He's such a misogynist. <laughs> well, that was something I was going to bring up when you were talking about Tulsi, is that there is a lot of women going to be in this administration. Elise Stefanik, mm-hmm. Christy Nome, Tulsi, yeah, Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard, his chief of staff, I forget her name. Yeah, uh, or is it the chief of staff or the press secretary? Uh, the press secretary also. Also, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, she's she's cool. I like her a lot. Um, I don't I, I don't even know her name, but I've seen her do a couple of press conferences, mm-hmm. and she's sharp. Yeah. So his last one was too. I forget her name. Oh man, she was. I was hoping she was coming back because <laughs> I, I kind of was too. Um, oh, what is her name? She's on Fox now. Um, is she? Uh, I've seen her just uh, some spots here and there. Um, I can't remember her name right now. It's it's escaping. And me. this is this is uh, it was long enough ago that she's not in this notebook. I can't like no, flip you back couldn't to... flip back and find it. Yeah. No. But um. But no, like the whole idea that Trump hates women is just crazy. <laughs> like for somebody that, that hates women, he puts a lot of them in positions of power. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> strange, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It seems contradictory. You would think, yeah. yeah. Um, now with Matt Gates, like one of the things that I was going to point out is that he and, and Tulsi were both pushing Trump in his last term to um, pardon Snowden and uh, drop charges against Julian Assange. Oh, really? Um, yeah. it would have been nice to have an AG that was, <laughs> that was on board with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. oh, well, um, and I, you know, <laughs> I like that he is outside the establishment. There are things that I didn't like about him too, that are kind of irrelevant, I guess now, but I'm going to, I read all this stuff. So, <laughs> so it's gonna, all in your head. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to talk about it, I guess. Yeah. Um, he was, uh, he was one, of, he was a trust buster kind of guy like he was opposed to the accumulation of corporate power um which in and of itself i don't really have a problem with but i i think that the i think you're going after the wrong thing by going after the companies yeah i I think it's the government involvement and bureaucracy that results in the accumulation of corporate power. i mean just look at um look at the covid mess uh, they gave uh, they gave us all a couple thousand dollars, but they gave tons of money to big corporations. And yeah. because of their requirements about what was a, a necessary business to maintain and so forth, they closed a bunch of small and medium businesses and grew the largest businesses in the country with oh, their yeah. policies. So, yeah. um, although like he was one of the people that was uh, screaming about COVID bills and saying. You're giving all this money to corporations. Money needs to go to people. Yeah. So, oh well. I mean, he wasn't all bad. Yeah. Although if he's a child rapist, then he's pretty well all bad. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, you don't get a pass for that, no matter what other <laughs> stuff you're doing. There's yeah. there's no way to balance the scale the in scale that case. On that one, yeah. Um, but I'm not convinced that that's true. Yeah. Well, I mean that that so, I, from what I've heard, nobody's. I mean, well, some people are, but. <clears throat> Um, and then I guess last is, uh, RFKJ. Yeah. That's the, that's the big one. Health and human services. Um, you know, he is, uh, he's got this reputation as being a kooky anti-vaxxer, et cetera, et cetera. It's all you Um, hear. Yeah. That's not really his position. And those of you that think that like, go listen to him. Yeah. Um, well, that's the, the reason I want you to pull the clips. Well, <laughs> because yeah, because but you're not hearing that on the mainstream media. No, but what he was talking about is things that he could do. Yeah. Um, first day in office to to try and bring some people to account. But his issues yeah. are uh, the the chronic disease problem in the U.S. Like yeah, huge like really high rates of chronic disease in this really advanced country, and um. I mean, he, you may or may not agree with what he's blaming for chronic disease. And actually, he's not really blaming anything, but he's asking questions. Well, and, and it's it's okay if you disagree with him, but what's your answer? Well, and the thing is, is you have to ask the questions. And that's the problem mm-hmm. is like, 
And that's the reason, like, those clips I was talking about, you're not hearing those on the mainstream media because yeah. they don't even want you to think about that. Yeah. Like, much less ask the question. Um, well, and, in those clips, he's he's talking... I mean, the things that he's talking about is ending pharmaceutical ads. Yeah, which I think is huge. Um, opening the uh, vaccine databases... Once again, to, to science, at least probably to the public. If he's going to do well, that, he should just open it up. I thought he said he wanted to open it to the public. Um, yeah, I can't remember specifically. I, I feel like but, that's what he said, but I could be mistaken. Um, I, I don't think that he specified. He may not. Because I did listen to the clips today. Yeah. I don't think he specified it. I think he just said that he was he wanted to open up those databases so scientists could. Yeah. Um, Which I like I say, nobody knows what's in there. But I mean, I would like. I think that there's going to be big revelations coming out of that. Yeah. Um, and then his third thing was that he was going to threaten the uh, the medical journals with um, conspiracy charges, essentially. Yeah. That uh, he was going to um, bring them in with the a- the new AG. Yeah, right. And uh, and tell them that he um, he had reason to believe that they'd been conspiring with the pharmaceutical companies and, um, you know, physicians groups and so forth to uh, dupe the American people, to to promote dangerous and ineffective solutions to problems, and that what were they going to do to fix that? And if they didn't have a plan and, and start enacting it pretty quickly, he was going to bring civil and criminal charges. Which I think is just awesome. That would be hilarious. Oh, and man. and this is so one of those great. things that, that people don't understand is one of those deep corruptions in the medical field at this point. Oh, yeah. Um, is a lot of those journals. And physician groups. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but go... Go start looking into the details of why your medical costs have have increased so much. I mean, because what they'll tell you out there is like, oh, this technology is developed, and so all this technology costs so much more. No, the technology costs, they're not going up. What's going up is physician services costs. Yeah. Physician services costs, because those uh, physicians groups like the AMA and so forth limit the number of... Um, of slots in medical schools. They keep it below the population growth level. So that there's a limited number of physicians out there, which drives the price for their services up and leaves us actually like waiting in waiting rooms for an hour and a half <laughs> to see a specialist all the time. Yeah. Um, because there's not enough physicians out there because and it's not that there's not enough people that can do it. Yeah. It's that they refuse to qualify enough people to do it. It's, it's kept artificially low. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, his his issues are the chronic disease problem in the U.S. And it's okay if you don't agree with what he thinks the problem is, but you got him asking questions and the other side pretending that the problem doesn't exist. Yeah, and it clearly exists. Yeah. <laughs> um, he talks about problems with food supply, like poisoned food supply. Yeah. Um, and his vaccine safety thing his big issue is that vaccines should go through. Well, first off, that the the um, liability shield should be dropped. Yeah, that's huge. By the way, I and, mean, I think that alone will do wonders. Yeah, and that the vaccines should go through the same kind of uh, safety and efficacy trials that any other drug goes through because they don't right now. Yeah, it's not that he's opposed to vaccines; he's opposed to special treatment for vaccines. Yeah. Um, now he has definitely talked about the relationship between. Um, the high number of vaccine doses and some other problems that arise like autism and so forth. Yeah. Um, Which he feels like once we release that data that the CDC has, mm -hmm. that we will answer some of those questions. Yeah. Uh, Allergies, all kinds of things. So, um, but he's, he's talking about a correlation there. Yeah. Uh, It may be the cause, it may not, but yeah. The the problem that he keeps pointing out is that there hasn't been enough actual research on any of this stuff. Yeah. So um, they keep referring to like a single study that they say they claim debunked the autism thing. And I I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the, the truth is, I don't know either. But the fact that the that nobody's even asking the questions is what's so frustrating. Um. So the question now arises like. They can't stop all of Trump's recommendations. They can't prevent all of these people from yeah. taking office. They're going to have to pick and choose one or two. Yeah. Um, so my question is, who do you think is the target? 
who do you think is the the person they most want to prevent taking the position that Trump has recommended them for? Well, before today, I was going to say Gates. Yeah. Um, but with Gates out now um, on his own, I mean, I think RFK is in the in the crosshairs. Yeah. Um, and I, like I say, we'll have to see how this all plays out. But my my biggest worry with him is that the pharmaceutical industry controls in so much of Congress that, I mean, it's going to be a real test if he can get through or not of how much control they really have. Yeah, there's that's a tremendous amount of money. So I, I do think, I think the question really is between Tulsi and RFKJ. Yeah. Um, you don't think Tulsi so. would be on top of a lot of secrets that people don't want to come out. Yeah. That's and true. she's the kind of person that'll let them out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, you know, nothing that would be really dangerous to co- to the country. I don't think, but things yeah. that could be dangerous to people's the people reputations, yeah. um, and their careers. Uh, so I, I don't know. Um, I think that it's a question of whether, yeah, I, I actually agree with you. I think RFKJ is the guy that they most want to stop because yeah. the, um, health and human services over CDC and FDA and, um, the agriculture thing, uh, um, USDA. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like that is a giant sprawling really powerful bureaucracy that um, affects a lot of people's incomes Yeah, yeah. that he would be taking over. <laughs> a lot of people in Congress's incomes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I, I, I think, yeah, I agree. I think that RFKJ is really the target. Um, Tulsi, on the other hand, like the military industrial complex is really really powerful yeah, and never, she would never be in count a, them out. <laughs> yeah. And she would be in a position to, um, I, I don't know, I, I guess, uh, debunk information that is used to get us into new wars and so forth Yeah, in the future. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's RFKJ too. I think that that, I just think that lobby, I mean, while the military lobby holds a lot, I just feel mm-hmm. like the pharmaceutical and the food industry is going to. Yeah. I mean, you have suppliers and contractors in the military industrial complex, and you have people that have control over violent people. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. It, there's something to be said for that, too. Like, that's definitely a factor here. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the uh, medical, pharmaceutical, and agricultural fields, um, is a tremendous amount of money. Mm -hmm. Um, it goes a long way. You're not just talking about like, even, even if you just take one aspect of it, if you just take the pharmaceutical companies, you're not just talking about the producers of pharmaceuticals and research and development and so forth. You're also talking about all of the people that they pay, the principal investigators that they pay to test their pharmaceuticals. Um, the, uh, the universities and so forth that get a bunch of funding, like, you know, university medical centers are almost exclusively funded as far as I can tell by the NIH. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of their incomes Yeah, um, or their revenue. Uh, so it, there's a lot of people that are really dependent on that particular um, income stream. Yeah. Or revenue stream. And so, yeah, I think that he and he's somebody that could potentially upturn the whole thing. Oh yeah, he's he's trying to rock the boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Like I say, I hope mm. he gets in. I hope they both get in, Tulsi and him. Yeah, but like, I'd like, love to see what happened. I think that I think that both of those appointments are would move the country in a good direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, bring they, us to back me, to to me. They had both of those appointments have the potential to make the Trump presidency something to be excited about. Yeah. I mean, with, without them to, it's, it gets more difficult yeah. <laughs> to I be mean, excited. Th- there is, there is danger in the Iran thing. Now Trump has said, and I don't know if this is just an excuse for his bad decisions or what at the same time, a lot of 
people in his previous administration didn't last very long, so maybe the worst of these appointments won't be there very long. Yeah. It's possible. Of course, that also means that... That could go the for best, the good ones, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, he has made the excuse, as far as I, I'm concerned, that he likes to have people that have differing opinions um, instead of people that are just promoting his agenda. But that didn't work out very well, well in the first term. And that was term. the reason I asked about Waltz's position as far as it's being advisory, you mm-hmm. know, because he does like to, and all presidents do this. He's not unique in that way, but they like to have a bunch of different opinions around mm-hmm. so they can kind of, um, you know, make decisions based off all the angles. And so many of these people are really concerned about China being the greatest threat that I, <laughs> I don't know if this is better necessarily, but I think that they would prefer to shift resources from the middle east to the pacific yeah and so maybe iran isn't in so much danger maybe we could pull back at least a little bit on our support for israel especially if they try continue to try and expand their war in the middle east yeah Um, these are all people that have some um experience with the debacle of iraq and afghanistan so, but it it surprises me over and over again how people in government don't seem to learn lessons. So, oh I yeah, don't, no, they don't. <laughs> yeah, that's not how government works. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how confident I can be about that. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to see. There's, uh, there's reasons to be excited and reasons to be concerned. Yeah. And then here's another reason to be concerned. <laughs> yeah. It amazes me that, okay, so as soon as Trump was elected, um, Blinken and Sullivan were both out there, Anthony Blinken and and Jake Sullivan, this is National Security Advisor and the Secretary of State. By the way, um, Marco Rubio, I think, has got to be, he would have a hard time not being a better Secretary of State than Anthony Blinken. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the same time, there's a possibility that Marco Rubio could be a worse Secretary of State than Anthony Blinken. It could happen. Um, But anyway, uh, right after the election, they were both out there saying that that they were going to make sure that they transferred all the money that had already been approved by Congress to go to Ukraine, something like $7 billion, um, (laughs) over to Ukraine before Before Trump takes office. Yes. Nice. Yeah, so <laughs> because we know what's going to happen when Trump gets in. Right. Um, We're going to be getting more money. And then uh, it's either Sunday or Monday, the New York Times um, ran an article announcing that the, the Biden administration had authorized um, Ukraine to use Atakum's missiles inside Russia, which Russia has said over and over again as a red line. And you may remember a few months ago, we talked about their proposed new nuclear stance that said if a nuclear power is supporting a country attacking us, that essentially they lowered the threshold of what they need to um, to respond with nuclear weapons yeah. in this proposal. Well, right after this announcement, they approved that change in their nuclear posture. Yeah. Which is a pretty strong message. Yeah. Um, So the and they're not wrong. Actually, they they've made it clear that they see attacks of this type um, as an attack by NATO, and they've made it clear that this does risk nuclear war. And the truth is that the attackums and the um, uh, UK's Storm Shadow or whatever their their missiles are called. Uh, require like the Ukrainians can't do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they need somebody providing the intelligence data. They need somebody f- uh, programming the coordinates. They need somebody to set up the missions. Essentially these weapons can't be used without Americans running the attack actually and Brits running the storm shadows or whatever they're called. Yeah. So, it is an attack by From NATO us. countries. Yeah. And yeah. So the Ukrainians can't do it on their own. They have to have um, Western allies 
punching in the numbers. Like yeah. if I load a gun and pull back the hammer and then give it to you to just pull the trigger. Yeah. I'm still responsible for whatever happens after that. I think I agreed. <laughs> so especially if I point it at the person that I want you to shoot <laughs> now do it <laughs> and then like jab you in the side or yeah. something. Um, Zelensky still seems to be under some delusion that they can win with the right support. I mean, they can with the right support. If we get in there and start fighting this war for them with our military. I don't know that that ends in a win either. Well, it, it doesn't because it ends in nuclear war. So I mean, even if it didn't end in nuclear war, you don't think our we've army exhausted a lot of what we're capable of producing in, in a reasonable amount of time. Like mm -hmm. our military is designed to go in there and hit with a whole lot really quickly and put an end to it fast. And I, I don't yeah. know that we have enough to defeat Russia before we would run out of stuff. Yeah. And Russians have proven that their, their industrial base is capable of keeping up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only there is China's. Yeah. And Iran's and North Korea's. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. You know, whoever else. But I mean, I think that the, the help, the assistance of those other countries of providing munitions is overblown. Yeah. I think it's I, exaggerated. I, I, I'd agree with um, that. I think Russia Russia has now moved up to being the fourth largest economy in the world. Yeah. Yeah. They were not before this. We were supposed to be destroying their economy with all our sanctions and everything. <laughs> and it just seems we've, to get bigger and bigger. Yeah, we've made them more powerful. Yeah. Well, I mean, so they're only economy. behind us, China, and India at this point. Yeah. They've surpassed the UK. They've surpassed France. They've surpassed Germany. Yeah. There's a lot to be said about a war economy. Um. Well, yeah, but they're... <laughs> The prices of their major exports have gone up, and we haven't actually prevented them from exporting anything. Yeah. They're just exporting it to different groups. Yeah, exactly. And raise the cost for our own allies. Uh, what we need is a good old-fashioned blockade. Yeah. <laughs> That'll Russia's show a, them. Russia's a big place. <laughs> yeah, well. There's a lot of ways into Russia. <laughs> and out. <laughs> it covers seven time zones or something like yeah. that. Oh, you're not wrong. Maybe so, more so, than that. So you're saying the blockade won't work? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I don't think so. I mean, it might work if um, if the way it was reported is was the actual truth where uh, most of the world was on our side. Yeah. But there's like 40 countries on our side and there's almost 200 countries in the world. Yeah. So th there's, a <laughs> there's a lot that are either in the middle or... And, and that's the strange thing about it too is that the approach we seem to be taking is that we'll we're ju we'll just freeze out Russia, yeah. like they won't. We're not inviting them to our Christmas party, and they're going to be really upset about that, and they're going to do what they can so that they can get invited to the U.S. Christmas party. Yeah. But you know what? Russia doesn't care about the U.S. Christmas party. Yeah, <laughs> it's it so, just it, it's yeah. not it's not a motivator for them. Yeah, um, because they'll just go hang out with the cool kids. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it, it's like if if some group of nerds was trying to punish the most, you know, the homecoming king by yeah. not inviting him to their party. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even know your party existed. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that seems to be the approach that we're taking. And the idea that we can, that Ukraine especially can somehow put enough pressure on Russia to force them to the negotiating table no, man, you've lost. You don't have any leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leverage is gone. Russia has all the leverage. Why do they not care? Because they're in control of things here. Yeah. And in fact, you know, there was all that that talk. So <laughs> right after Trump was elected, the, there was the talk of um, he's having discussions with Putin. And of course, they were denied by the these discussions were denied by Russia. Um, and there was no evidence at that time um, that these discussions had happened. And the discussion was supposedly that Trump called Putin and told him, um, you know, just don't advance the war any. Uh, and so the other problem with that, of course, is that Russia is advancing very quickly in Ukraine. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. if that was the discussion, it didn't have it any impact. Didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it was, you know, they're trying to redo the Russiagate BS that they're trying to make a claim that 
Russia, that Putin and Trump are close. Well, and so that actually brings me to something. Do you think that maybe that's what the powers that be are trying to do with this escalating this war before he takes office um, to put him Trump in the position where he can't, where he can't easily end it. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, okay. Yes. Um, I think that that's a, I think that that's a big part of it. I think that the, you know, deep state, whatever you want to call it, the permanent bureaucracy, the military industrial complex, whatever. Yeah. Um, wants to try and put, Knowing that Trump wants to bring an end to this war, they want to try and create a situation where he can't. Yeah, exactly. That they want to escalate to the point where he can't just step in and bring a, a swift end to the war. Yeah. Um, now, it is amazing to me that an administration who has just been soundly defeated, yeah, partly on this issue, yeah, can then escalate a war as a lame duck president (laughs) that the incoming president wants to bring it into. It's amazing to me that there's got to be, I feel like there's got to be somebody that can step in and say, we can't permit this. I mean, well, there is, it would be Congress, but they won't. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where the check is though. Um, I mean that, that is where the check is at, Uh, but it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Well, and I don't know how much of a check they can they can apply in this case because I mean the only way the, no actually I think it takes too long for the Supreme Court to do anything about it but right. the you know Congress could press their war powers Supreme Court could say you're the commander in chief when war has been declared war has not been declared you can't do this yeah um. But the problem is, is we've let so many presidents over so long just mm. shoot missiles wherever they want to shoot them at. Yeah, and I mean, whenever. Who's, who's to say that, you know, I mean, of course, you know, all of the other presidents were shooting them at, like, sandy places in the desert. Yeah. Like, who's to say that, that you can't use that same power to shoot them at Russia? Yeah. Snowy places. Snowy places. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, I mean, that's just, it's the world we live in. Um, wow. But but it's it, it is astonishing that this is. It just tells me like you really got to have, you really got to have a set to just like be like you know what we've soundly lost the election we're fixing to leave and we're gonna just like start World War Three on the way out. Yeah, and, and we, then they talk about how how Trump was an insurrectionist or whatever. Yeah, I mean he didn't start World War Three. <laughs> I did see a Babylon B headline. Gosh, I love their headlines. Oh, their great. articles are. Yeah, but their headlines, the headlines are great. Are the, yeah, the um, that said in a uh, last ditch effort to prevent Trump from taking office, um, Biden's administration starts World War Three yeah. or something. Exactly. And I, I actually heard uh, Larry Johnson, I think is his name, um, talking about that, you know, nothing would surprise him anymore um, and gave this kind of ridiculous scenario where the Biden administration is able to escalate and cause Russia to react in a in a significant way and declare a state of emergency and say we can't have power transfer right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We're in a war with Russia. We're in a war with Russia. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so. And then Biden croaks and then Kamala's president. Right. And, <laughs> Can you imagine that scenario? Oh gosh. Well, Luckily, our constitution doesn't work like the Ukrainian constitution where you can't transfer power <laughs> just while like, a war is going on. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be possible. It should just be a joke to even suggest that. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel... I mean, in fact, it is a joke to suggest that. That was the point of the Babylon Bee <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. headline. Oh. But uh, the, the problem with satire these days is satire is only like a few months or a few years from being reality. So yeah. Um, yeah. That's the reason all those Babylon B headlines always scare me mm. <laughs> because they're not far from being they're just what it is. Yeah. So um, that's where we are. Hopefully, hopefully um, was it general Keene or whoever it was that I saw uh, saying, who thinks that Putin would 
launch a nuclear attack with just months before Trump takes office and dismissing it as being completely ridiculous. And I don't think it's going to happen because they're winning. Yeah. Like they don't need to. Well, and the truth is, is is Putin has been very calculated in his moves through this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And through his entire career, actually. Yeah. But which is, is actually good for us. Mm -hmm. And it has been throughout his time. Yeah. But particularly now, because he does know that a new administration is coming in, one that Mm -hmm. he's dealt with before. Um, and one that he ne- ha- one that has publicly said they they want to bring this to a conclusion, and yeah. and that was one of the other things that I wanted to say about this talk after Trump was election uh, elected is that they were like um, people were saying, oh you know this is right wingers this time, yeah. oh look how uh, as soon as Trump was elected now suddenly Russia's ready to negotiate and um, Hamas is ready to negotiate. <laughs> no, both those groups were ready to negotiate the entire time. They've been trying to negotiate. Yeah, they just couldn't. Yeah. There was nobody to negotiate with. <laughs> right. Um, the administration was unwilling to negotiate with Russia, and Israel was unwilling to negotiate with uh, Hamas. Yeah, exactly. But the Russians have always said, Putin has always said, I'm ready to talk whenever somebody wants to talk. Yeah, exactly. I'm here. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I got a phone next to me. Yeah. yeah. Call me anytime. Yeah. And you've had an administration that just refuses to do to, do so. Yeah, on any level. Yeah, like, and that's what astonishes me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you know I can kind of see like Putin and Biden not having to sit down and talking, but you have your underlings like lay some of that out and keep communication going. Yeah, and and that has not happened. Yeah. It's just astonishing to me. Me too. Um, so hopefully there will be some improvement. Yeah, although. As pointed out at the beginning, the stated goals of a lot of this incoming cabinet are the goals that are, or the, the paths that the current administration has already chosen. So including launching long range missiles into Russia. So (laughs) yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, but there is reason for hope and there's reason to be concerned as always. Yeah. Cause our elites aren't. Very elite. Very elite. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything more you want to add before think, we wrap up here? I think that's good. Next week's Thanksgiving, so... Ooh, it won't be Thursday. No, definitely not. I have to work. Um, <laughs> it's Thanksgiving, so I have to work. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to work on Thursday. I'll have to work on Friday. I'll have to work extra on Friday, too. Next week's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, we may not get one out next week, then. But we'll, we'll try. See. I think I think we should be able to do it, but it is going to be tight. Yeah, might, maybe Saturday. Yeah, and maybe Friday. Like Friday could happen. Saturday can happen. Saturday I is probably more likely for me. For you, okay. Yeah. I mean, I think we can get one out on Saturday. That seems realistic. Okay, cool. Well, that'll be the plan then. Um, and so uh, we'll be back next week at some point. Yeah. And in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, like and share. Uh, you can always email me at michael at the liberty um, Yeah, leave reviews, comments, whatever. Absolutely. We like all interaction. It all helps. Absolutely. And tell your friends. Yeah. Because we're great. Absolutely. We know what we're talking about. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> yep. Sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the time. Sweet. I like that assessment. (laughs) All right. So we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Live short, live free. Ciao. Later. (laughs) 